Okay, so today it's going to be Joe Biden, Marco Rubio, and uh, Mark Kelly. So three, three for one. Hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So all three of these guys have something going on. So for um, Mark uh, Kelly, the astronaut, uh, he uh, had taken over uh, the Senate seat in Arizona, and now he's running for a full uh, term. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. Then for uh, Marco Rubio, so now he's going to be up against Val Demings, who's very popular and makes uh, drags in a lot of donations. Let's see how that goes. And then Joe Biden, we just need an update on where his head's at and uh, and what's kind of going on with him. So the three is what we'll do. This will be kind of a longer video than usual. So hang in there and here's some information. But first, let's look at the cards. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's a, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow, Joe Lee, uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very in interesting person. And uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him, um, but he was a circus performer. He went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well at the Clown College there uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a, a degree in that. And then uh, he's done other things in his life, and then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards, he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful. They're easy to use. Um, the art on them is amazing. And if you know your right away system, you're not going to have a problem, you know, deciphering uh, what these cards are, are going to mean. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory and fun, fun, fun to look at. So, you know, I do this so that you can have a look at these cards. Uh, and, you know, if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards, Otherwise, you're only going to see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time. And uh, I think it's just that you're missing out on a lot. So, you know, this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot, I love using these. Okay, so we're going to start with Mark Kelly. I'm just bringing him up on my uh, uh, tablet here. So who is uh, Mark Kelly? First of all, he's the Democratic Arizona Senator, uh, a former astronaut, a businessman, a U.S. Navy captain, and he's serving as the junior United States Senator from Arizona since 2020. Okay, he's running for a full six-year term, and he's the husband of former uh, Democratic Representative Gabby Giffords, who had been shot in the head in 2011. So here's what's going on. In 1964, Mark Edward Kelly is born on February 21st, so he's a Pisces. Uh, he, he and a twin brother, Scott Kelly, are the sons of Richard and Patricia, who are two retired police officers of Irish uh, descent. Kelly, could have guessed, right? Now, in 1982, 1982, Mark graduated from high school. And then in 86, he received a bachelor's degree in marine engineering and nautical science from the United States Merchant Marine Academy, graduating with highest uh, honor. Now, in 1987, Kelly became a naval aviator. And then in 89, he married Amelia Victoria Babbis. That's his first wife. Uh, they have two daughters, Claudia and Claire. Now, in 1993, after receiving his master's degree, uh, Kelly attended the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School. And in 1994, he received a master's in aeronautical engineering from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. And then in uh, 1996, NASA selected both Mark and his brother Scott to be uh, space shuttle pilots. And in 2001, he flew his first space mission. 2003, Mark meets Arizona's U.S. Representative Gabby Giffords, 
okay, on a trip to China as part of a trade mission sponsored by the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. Uh, 19, uh, in 2004, he divorces his first wife. And then 2006, his flight, uh, he has his flight on the space shuttle Discovery. But then in 2007, he uh, marries uh, Gabby Giffords. At 2011, Kelly's wife, Gabby Giffords, then who is the Arizona Congresswoman, uh, was shot and nearly killed in an assassination attempt. And uh, Kelly announced his retirement from the U.S. Navy and NASA. Um, he did that uh, after his final uh, space mission of uh, the uh, shuttle uh, Endeavor. His identical twin, Scott, is also a retired um, astronaut. And then uh, they are the only two siblings to have both traveled in space. Now in 2020, he won that special election that puts him in that seat right now, and narrowly defeating the incumbent Arizona uh, Republican. And uh, Kelly has traveled over 4.8 million miles and orbited the Earth 186 times over 11 days and 19 plus Hours. So let's see what we can find out about Mr. Uh, Scott, uh, Mark, 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 Kelly, my name. So we're going to start out with just a less than a minute of meditation. Okay, so let's see what we can find out for Mr. Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly in that Arizona race. So voters in Arizona will elect one member to the U.S. Senate in the general election on November 8, 2022. And the primary is scheduled for August 2nd, 2022. The filing deadline um, is April 4th, uh, 2022. So the election will fill the Class 3 Senate seat held by Mark Kelly right now, who he took the office in December of 2020 following a special election victory in November of 2020. Okay. So the two previous uh, Senate elections there held in 2018 and 2020, both were decided by a two point by 2.4 percentage points. Uh, and so that's how close that race is. So let's see if we think Mark Kelly, six cards, is going to get this race. So this is one, two, three, four. I'll deal with that one. Five and six. Okay, Mark Kelly, six cards. How are you going to do in this Senate race in Arizona? Democrat. All righty. Well, that's where that crazy Christian cinema is. Second fire card for Mark Kelly in the Senate race is a King of Wands. Okay, he's got a plan. He's got a strong plan. And uh, the King of so, and that's the Wands are uh, actions, plans, motions, uh, motion forward. And the King, of course, is completely in charge of that. So this King is really uh, got a big plan. And this is an experienced King in this example. It's challenged by what? It's challenged by the chariot. Things moving on fast. Okay. So. It could, I'm not sure what the issues are that are coming on fast, but the, this, it's going to be uh, difficult for him to prepare for that. And the base of this reading is the sun. So, so the sun is enlightenment, uh, shining a light on the issue, and he is the star uh, in this. He's, all the light is shining on him for this reading right now because he's got the name recognition. And the past of this reading is the page of cups. And so the page is the very least effective of the court cards, but cups are compassion and emotion. And so this he's bringing with him that uh, offering of some compassion. Remember, his wife, uh, Gabby Giffords, uh, was shot in the head. She was a senator from Arizona in the um, but, but it's a, but it's a small uh, offering it's, it's not gonna have a huge uh, effect on the race in the sky this reading then with his four of swords just tell you that he better really uh, concentrate on this make sure he's got things well set up before he tries to move at his own peril okay and then the final outcome for this for mark ah, this is the five of cups and the five of cups is is uh, you know leaving something behind it's um uh, some spilt milk uh, they still got something to carry on with so it looks to me like with this five of cups he may not win this race i think this is the race and this is the life he has uh, after that which is still a full life with his beautiful wife gabby yep that's what we've got for that okay 
now it's uh, Republican Senator Marco Rubio from Florida. So he's running for a third term with the backing of Trump, which is amazing because they were bright, bitter enemies during the presidential race. But he's likely to face Democratic Representative Val Demings, who was the former Orlando P, uh, police chief, and she's pretty strong. Now, in 1971, Marco Antonio Rubio was born in Miami, Florida on May 28th, so he's a Gemini. And uh, he's the second son and the third child, and he has an older brother, an older sister, and a younger sister. So there's four of them in that family. Now, while living in Nevada, his family lived in Nevada, his father worked as a bartender, and his mother was a housekeeper. Uh, neither was a U.S. citizen at the time of Marco's birth. Now, in 1956, Rubio's maternal grandfather, whose name was Pedro Victor Garcia, legally, absolutely legally immigrated to the United States. Also that year, Marco's parents left Cuba. Now in 1959, Grandpa Garcia returned to Cuba to find work. He wasn't, he wasn't making a go of it in the U.S. But in 1961, his mother, uh, Marco's mother, took his two elder siblings back to Cuba to live permanently. Remember the, the grandpa, her, her dad had come, then she came with her family. Now grandpa goes back, and now she's taking her two el older kids back to Cuba to live permanently. And his father remained, uh, his father, Marco's father, remained in Miami to wrap up family matters but Cuba's communism caused the family to rejoin again in the United States so Marco's father never did uh, make it back to Cuba and mom and the kids came back to Miami. Now in 1962 Grandpa Garcia again fled communist Cuba for the U.S. as an undocumented immigrant this time and a judge, a U.S. judge ordered him deported but immigration officials actually revised this later the same day and he was given a legal status to stay in the U.S. In 1966, Grandpa Garcia reapplied for permanent resident status. And in 1975, Marco's parents were actually naturalized. Now, in 1985, the whole family moved back uh, to Miami from Nevada. I don't know if that included Grandpa. But in 1989, Rubio, Marco Rubio, attended South Miami, Miami Senior High School. In 1990, he attended the Tar Tarkio College in Missouri for one year on a football scholarship uh, before enrolling at Santa Fe Community College, not in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Mexico but their, one of their satellites in Gainesville, Florida. Now, in 1993, Marco earned his bachelor's degree in political, political science from the University of Florida. And in 1996, he got his Juris Doctor uh, Cum Laude from the University of Miami School of Law. And then in 1996, while studying law, Rubio interned for a U.S. representative, and he also worked on a Republican senator's presidential campaign. That was Bob Doyle, who just passed away, as a matter of fact. And he didn't win, obvi win, obviously. In 1998, two years after finishing law school, Rubio was elected, elected as a city commissioner for West Miami. So now he's in politics. 2000, he became a member of the Florida House of Representatives. In 2006, he was elected Speaker of the Florida House for two years. 2008, after leaving the Florida legis legislature, Rubio began teaching at Florida International University, FIU, and uh, as an adjunct uh, professor. And then in 2010, he was elected to the United States uh, Senate for Florida. In 2011, he joined the Florida International University f faculty, so the FIU faculty, in 2011. He teaches in the Department of Politics, International Relations, and has taught undergraduate courses on Florida's politics, political parties, and legislative politics. Then, in 2015, as we all know, he decided to run for president, but suspended his campaign after losing the Florida Republican primary to who? His enemy and now his buddy, Donald Trump. So, let's see how this goes. So now we're going to see how this is going to work for Marco Rubio. You know, Val Demings is a money-raising uh, fool. I mean, she's doing a great job. Uh, raising money in Florida for that race. But uh, the advantage seems to be to Rubio because he starts out, he, his willingness to say and do anything to win the election. Uh, he was, you know, a huge critic of Trump and now he's uh, a lapdog for Trump. So he will do whatever it takes to uh, win that election and he doesn't care what he said in the past or what he has to say in the future. And it looked like during the presidential race he had some um, ethics. But, I mean, he, he lost him quickly. He got out. Of, he was going to get out of politics. And then I guess he found out he couldn't make enough money. And then he got right back in again. So with the excuse that he was doing it for Florida. But you know what? I think Marco Rubio does everything for Marco Rubio. So six cards right off the top to see how will Mark Rubio do uh, against uh, Val Demings. Mark Rubio against Val Demings. How is he going to do? Okay. Mark Rubio with the signifier card. 
ah, this Eight of Swords really feeling trapped. Okay, it feels dangerous. It feels like it's not something you're going to be able to get away from. But listen, remember, this is a circus act. Those knives are not really being thrown at him. Okay, it just seems dangerous, and he may be in less danger uh, than uh, than he thinks he is. The challenge to that then is this Ace of Swords. So uh, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. So the challenge to this uh, pretend uh, situation is the actual truth, justice, rules, and law. Okay, so that is the challenge for him. But it's in Florida, so strong on Republicans. The base of this reading is temperance. Okay, so he's got to find a balance, a temperance for how to perform uh, this act, how to keep things on a, on the right kind of a keel for him. And in the past of this reading. With uh, this five of swords, you know, five of swords is an abuse of power. And that's exactly what he's been doing. He's been abusing his power. He's even got some people walking away from this act. They just don't want to see it anymore. So that could be something that uh, is a tell in what how this comes out. And the sky of this reading is the world. And look, this is a great big fat Republican balanced on a tiny little egg. It's the world card. So it means the beginning of something and the end of something else. It means a big I mean, something is completely completed when the world card shows up. So it could mean it's over for that Republican, Marco Rubio. But the likely outcome of the whole thing, ah, yeah, this Nine of Swords. Look, Nine of Swords is just a nightmare. How can this uh, performer walk up a ladder of swords? You tell me. So it looks like it's going to be a tough, a tough race for Marco Rubio. And I'll just jump off and say that with this Nine of Swords, no, he's not going to make it. So the final entry then is Joe Biden, and we're going to find out uh, what is in the future for Joe Biden with all these issues he's got going on right now. But first, let's find out, let's refresh ourselves about who he is. So he was born on November 20th in 1942, and he's a Scorpio in and, and Scranton, Pennsylvania, the oldest child in a Catholic family. He has a sister and two brothers. Now, Biden was a stutterer. He has a stutter, which was which he has improved, much not un, uh, sadly mine hasn't, has improved uh, since his early 20s. He reduced it by reciting poetry in front of a mirror. Now, Biden's father had been wealthy, but suffered financial setbacks, and for several years, the family lived with Biden's mother's parents. And by 1953, his dad became a successful used car salesman and uh, maintained a middle-class lifestyle for the family. Uh, 1961, Joey Jr. Uh, played baseball and was a standout halfback wide receiver on the high school football team. Though a poor student, he was class president in his junior and senior years, and he graduated. So, 1965, Joe briefly played freshman football at the University of Delaware in Newark and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree with a double major in history and political science and a minor in English. 1966, he married uh, his first wife, Nelia Hunter. They had three children, Joseph R. Uh, Bo Biden III, uh, Robert Hunter Biden, and Naomi Christina Amy Biden. In 1968, Joe earned a Juris Doctor from Syracuse University College of Law. And in 1969, he was admitted to the Delaware uh, Bar. In 1968, though, he was given a conditional medical deferment due to asthma. So uh, he earned a law degree from Syracuse University and clerked at the Wilmington Law Firm and thought of himself as a Republican, but registered as an independent because of his distaste for the Republican presidential candidate at the time, Richard Nixon, who we all know uh, resigned in disgrace uh, at the end of his presidency. In 1969, he, uh, Biden practiced law as a public defender and then privately at a firm headed by a locally active Democrat. And then um, in 1969, Joe Biden subsequently registered as a Democrat. In 1970, he was elected to the Newcastle City Council. In 1972, Joe became the sixth youngest senator in U.S. history after he was elected to the Delaware Senate. Now, in 1973 to 2009, wow, he represented Delaware in the United States Senate. And in 1972, a few weeks after the election, Biden's wife, Nelia, and one-year-old daughter, Naomi, were killed in an automobile accident uh, while Christmas shopping. Her station wagon was hit by a semi-trailer uh, truck as she pulled out from an intersection. And their sons, Bo, age three, and Hunter, age two, survived. Biden considered resigning uh, from the Senate to care for them, but the majority leader uh, persuaded him uh, not to. Years later, Biden said that he had heard that the truck driver allegedly drank alcohol before the collision, and but the driver's family denied that claim, and the police never substantiated it, and Joe later apologized to the family. And uh, the accident had filled him with anger and religious doubt, and Joe wrote that he felt God had played a horrible trick on him, and he had trouble focusing on work. In 1975, he met Teresa, teacher Jill Tracy Jacobs on a blind date, and Biden credits her with the renewal of his interest in politics and life, and in 1977, they were married. In 1981, their daughter, Ashley Biden, is born, and 91 to 2008, Biden co-taught a seminar on constitutional law at Widener University School of Law, and then in 1987 through 95, he chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee. 
Uh, Biden was reelected to the Senate six times and was the fourth most senior senator and for 12 years was the chair or ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. 2008, he ran unsuccessfully for the Democratic presidential candidate, but he became Obama's vice presidential candidate, as we all know. In 2009 to 2017, he served as the 47th vice president under Barack Obama, and he's the oldest elected president and the first to have a female vice president. He'll be turning 82 uh, this coming year. And when is his birthday, did I say in the beginning? Uh, in November. So there we go. Now, all the issues for Joe Biden are are vast. I mean, he's got this insane situation with uh, Joe Manchin on this um, uh, Build Back Better plan that he's trying to get pushed through. And um, then next year, he's in the end of, by the end of the year, he'll be 82. Then he has to uh, run another presidential race uh, in 2024, which will start sometime in 2023. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, he looks frail. I love what he stands for. Uh, is Kamala Harris going to be able to uh, pick up the the you know, the weight? I mean, I just don't know. So Joe Biden, twenty twenty two. Let's see how things are going to go for you. This will be a six card. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So six cards. For Joe Biden, see how he does in this next year. We won't go all the way to re-election, but we'll see how he's coming up in this next year and with this Build Back Better plan. The signifier card for that is the King of Swords. Okay, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, and Biden has has shown that he is determined to be the king of all of those things. So that's the signifier card. The challenge to Joe Biden's uh, King of Swords is this page of coins. You know, coins are value, they're worth, they can be money, and I think in this case, the with the page is the least um, significant of the royal court cards. Uh, this page of coins, this small offer of value, somehow is representing what he's uh, what's coming up in this next year. Hmm. So he's trying to get that big uh, bill through, and it's not it's not panning out with this small offer uh, here against his, his uh, King of Swords. The base of that reading then, look at that, is this Ace of Swords. This is really feeling trapped, but guess what? We know that this is a sideshow. These knives are not really being thrown at him. They usually come out of the back of the, of the thing and they look like they've been thrown. So it, he may seem like he's uh, in a corner, but he's not. And the past of this reading with this Three of Wands is long-term planning. So this tells me that he's making those long-term plans for 2024. And he's, a couple of these things are set in stone, and he's getting ready to move some of these uh, actions forward. In the sky of this reading, with this Knight of Coins, okay, he's got to aim for the, the most value that he can with the strongest member of the royal court to, to, to fight for that value, and that's the Knight. And so this uh, fellow here is the guy who stands outside and calls the people in to, uh, to uh, see the shows that are out there. So this Knight of Coins... Um, is who Joe is going to be in trying to pump up his value. But then the likely outcome of the whole thing with this seven of, of wands, you know, wands are actions, plans, movement, movement forward, and fire. And so he's going to be embattled. He's, he's, he's going to be this strong man really trying to pound down these opposing actions. So he's not going to have an easy time uh, with this Build Back Better plan. But let me just get four more cards on that to see if they can tell us if his Build Back Better plan is going to make it through. Is his plan going to make it through? The Build Back Better. Four cards. Finish that off. One, uh, the self of that question, will this plan? Okay. So these are ones, and this is the four of ones. And what we've got here is that these four of ones are holding up the tent, as you can see. Um, they're what's keeping things up. But look at this. These Republicans are lumbering around, around the base of these poles, uh, threatening to knock them down. So that's the question that we've got right now with that Build Back Better plan. It's in the environment of in the environment of the king of wands, okay, the, the king of action. Wands are action, plans, getting something done, and he is absolutely doing everything he can to be that king of those actions against this lowly four of wands. If you're just playing a, a, a game of cards, you've got a four of wands against a king of, a king of wands. The king of wands trumps the four. Uh, sorry to use that word. Uh, the... Uh, Hopes and the fears of this then with the magician. Okay, the hope is that he has all the tools at, available to him to pull this thing off and to bring it to fruition. But the likely outcome of the whole thing for Joe is look at that with this two of cups is that he finds the companionship. He finds the uh, partnership to perform this act perfectly. And so it looks like with this two of cups up here in the sky, I'm going to say that he will. He'll find a way to get it through. 
Okay, so that was our triple decker today. I hope you liked it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of a little bit longer, a little more involved uh, video. I'm anxious to hear about that. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.